This is BC Spruch, your look at the province's burgeoning distilling culture. What is happening, BC Spirits? Welcome to episode 55 of the Weekly Tasting. I haven't done one of these since August of this year because I haven't ha been able to like group things together and do I've talked about this. Spirit of Day has been exploding. Um, and then I started doing cocktails a week, which is tonight's episode, which is a fantastic Manhattan. Um, so what do, what do you say that I sort of have put together to possibly do a big grand tasting, a big weekly tasting that I haven't done for over three months? That would be, I'm gonna try and pick up as many of these, these guys, the root side sellers, or root side syrups and mixers, brand new line of bitters. Now, typically I would tell clients to roll out products slowly, try in the market, see how it feels. Um, but Quinn and Michaela, um, I don't think they listen to me anyway, but Quinn and Michaela um, it are more of an all and everything instead of a nothing sort of uh, mentality towards life, which I absolutely adore because they're amazing people and I really love working with them. Um, they put out seven bitters just because it's Christmas time and you deserve a treat and they wanted to work hard and they decided to put out seven bitters all at once. Um, the cool thing with these bitters, and I really love this story, is that at the end of the process of making vermouth, at the end of the process of making syrups, they were like, huh, we've got all this stuff left over, all these botanicals, all this like stuff that we don't know if we can reuse again because we want to try and keep our carbon footprint down. If you imagine they're making thousands of liters of syrup and thousands of liters of vermouth, that that's a substantial like poundage of leftover botanicals at the end of the process. So they were like, okay, well, what if we reconstituted this Soak it in alcohol and see how it is. Now, before you say like that's double, like doing tea bags twice and that sort of thing, it's not really because when you're making syrups, you're just boiling and extracting the flavor through boiling of water. Water is not a very big solvent, alcohol is. When you're making the vermouth and stuff, it's soaking in wine, it's a lower alcohol content. Um, so again, it's not extracting all the flavors you can possibly extract out of it. And so using alcohol as a solvent, using those secondary ingredients, and dropping them in really, really just like jacks up the flavor and you extract absolutely everything. So at the end of this process, when they finish making their bitters, they can go, okay, well, I think we're done. I think we, we, can't, we can't use this again, ever again, because we've extracted absolutely all the flavors out of there. Um, you're gonna have different extraction points. You're gonna have different flavor profiles come out from those extraction points. It gets very scientific when it comes to temperature and extractions and solvents and all this sort of stuff. But let's kick it off. Um, they've got, I'm just gonna go through it one by one. So let's kick off with the aromatic-ish. 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 Yep, that sounds right, right. Elderflower, cinnamon, clove, star anise, rosemary. Elderflower is a really interesting one on this one. That's probably where that fruitiness comes from. So, two ways you can try these bitters. Dash on your hand. Now I've cleaned my hands up. I've like washed them with clean water. So like tapped them off before you start saying, oh, okay, well you can taste the back of your hand. Doesn't really work that way. Another way you can do it, dash them into your hands. We're all sanitizing things left, right, and center right now. And smell in your hands. You really get the aromatics in that one. So you're not killing off your palate. Um, I prefer the dash on the back of the hand. These are really good starting aromatics. Um, flavorful, uh, Everything you kind of want there from an aromatic one. I'm really looking forward to some of the lighter rides we have in BC to play around with this one. Elderflower gives it this wonderful fruitiness and everybody loves elderflower. If you if you don't love elderflower, there's something wrong with you. So once you've splashed some in your hand and whatnot, you want to wash your hands off, obviously. Take a sip of water. Next up, Cascadian bitters. I can't even pronounce the first word. Ellie Capain. Rosemary, juniper, orris, meadow sweet, and bay leaves. So literally leaning into like what we sort of feel here on the west coast. Ooh. Mmm. Much more on that sort of like veggie garden, herbal garden, that sort of thing. Um, Imagine walking through a herb garden and just rubbing your hands on the rosemary and the uh, bay leaves and that sort of thing. Very, very herbal, very almost savory, but it's still, again, a little bit of fruitiness there, which is very interesting. Next up, roasted dandelion bitters. Basically, roasted dandelion bitters and uh, orris root. 
Oh, sorry, coriander. Woo! Ooh. Herbal umami. Oh, very interesting. We're still on root coriander, white wine. That's where it's coming from. This is sort of umami. This is all, oh, yeah. Got a huge umami bomb there. That one, I'll be playing around with, like trying to get that, that fifth, that sixth flavor, that umami. Mmm. That one knocked me for a thing. I, I thought I'd lined them up in a way that it would sort of be going from lightest to heaviest and sort of finish off with like lavender because lavender kills your palate. Next up, root beer bitters, sarsaparilla, wintergreen, orris root, allspice. I'm looking forward to this one a lot. Obviously, oh, oh yeah. I grew up having sarsaparilla as a cordial as a kid in Australia. We have a big cordial culture. If, if you look it up, Cotties, C-O-T-T-E-E-S, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And if you're from Australia, you definitely understand what I'm talking about. These, like, sarsaparilla and root beer flavor is sort of my, my maple. Like, everybody likes maple syrup in Canada for some reason. Um, root beer bitters for me. Like, root beer, that flavor profile. Or root beer old fashioned. I absolutely adore root beer old fashions. Absolutely adore root beer old fashions. I'll be making that on the show very soon. What's next up? Oh, the coffee and cardamom bitters. This is a kind of cool one. Cardamom and specialty coffee from Mile Zero Coffee Company. So, what they do with this one, this really is like full circle sort of like sustainable shit um they take the leftover grounds from making the cold brew at mile zero and they bang it into this and they do this fantastic coffee and cardamom bitters oh really nice pairing i didn't think i was wondering how the cardamom was going to go because cardamom's a bit of a, a hit and miss flavor profile sometimes like it can be overbearing but man it really sings, and the coffee bitters in this one is great. Forty-three percent alcohol again. Um, this, in like, if you think about these, these are seasonings. These are salt and pepper. This is if you made a, a gin martini, which some of these wouldn't go in a gin martini. But hypothetically speaking, if you made a gin martini, same things: two to one, two parts gin, one part vermouth, dash of bitters. Every single drink will be different. Even if you use the same gin, the same vermouth. This is what I love about bitters: it's the salt and pepper, the seasoning in your drinks. Next up. The rose hip and lemon peel. I'm looking forward to this one. This one I think is going to go really well, Jim. Rose hip, hibiscus, lemon peel, elderflower, rhubarb. Oh, just sounds like you should be making a gin out of that. Oh, this is really good. Um, these are really fantastic. For people, for anybody who just wants like a dash dash, this and soda would be really, really tasty. This is like dash dash in the soda. Little citrus would be fantastic. Super subtle in the bitterness, not like the other ones. This is a very much more subtle one, but this with your gins, your more floral gins, especially here on the West Coast, killer. Um, and finally, oh, and finally, the lavender tonic bitters. So couch and lavender, wormwood, cardamom, coriander, and quinine. Huh. This one's actually got a few ingredients that might actually might take me off my my ass. Ooh, not what I expected. I expected a big, huge lavender bomb. I expected a massive lavender bomb. I did not expect any sort of like backbone and bitterness to this. Not saying that I wasn't expecting a lot, but if you like lavender bitters and you want that in your drink, this is the way to go. This. Um, we have a cocktail. We had a cocktail on the menu for a while, which was just a French seventy-five with a couple of dashes of this and like lem lavender syrup. Um, fantastic lavender, ton uh, lavender tonic bitters. Awesome. So, this is my little new spice rack, I suppose. This is my new little spice rack that I've got to play with. Um, cocktails are definitely coming. I got a lot of good ideas for these. Some really, really good ideas. Like popping around on my head. I've got a whole bunch of Miss Better Bitters and Bitters Sling and uh, Mad Lab. I've got a whole bunch of local bitters here. This was a number 55. I wanted to really showcase the new Rootside uh, mixes and bitters, bitter lineup. Quinn and Michaela, if you're watching this, you're absolutely crazy as hell to do seven bitters all at once. I have no idea how you find the energy all the time. And that's coming from me. Um, 
I hope you enjoy it, guys. Go to their website. I'll put a link in the blog post. Um, I probably won't be doing a daily blog post for this one like I usually do with the spirits, but I'll do one big blog post from where to buy it. So thanks as always, guys. I'll see you real soon. Uh, I probably won't see you again next week because I'm going to have stuff to do. But that being said, I will see you tonight for BC Spirit Cocktail of the Week. I will see you in a couple of hours for BC Spirit of the Day, and I'll see you tomorrow for another one. Bye, guys.